So guys, we are here today because today is a very important day for me. Um, I have Ghalib, Manisha and Nigi. All three of you have lost 40 kg each with me in exact seven months. And that is, that shows that it's not by accident that people lose weight and they achieve their goals with me. But it's a whole process and the program. You know, I have done many videos and people also post a lot on social media, on YouTube, that how to lose weight. But I think this is the very first video where we are going to discuss what you should do to sustain this weight and what you should not do after losing 40 kgs. 40 kg is a big number. I know you guys, both of you are still on the go to lose more weight and a few kgs Nigi also have to lose still. But uh, you guys are very close. Now you're on the other side of your journey where you're closer to your best version. Many people are still sitting, watching these videos, putting this like, putting a comment, sending me a message. They, they, want to, they also want to start like many people did. But there are very few people who actually have courage to start this journey. And you guys have reached here. So how do you feel? How do you feel, Ghalib? So first of all, um, thank you, Yasser, for having us here with you. And thank you for all the support throughout these seven months. So initially, we wouldn't have reached here if you had not believed in us and in the capability of us reaching to where we are. If you remember on the first day we met, all what I wanted is to become double digit. Yes. And you gave me a number that for me was imaginary. So you were the first one. I was not. You were the first one to have set that goal for me and believe that I can do it. Thank you. And so all the credit goes to you. Thank oh, you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for working so hard as well. Thank you. And, and, and this journey wouldn't, I mean, I would be unfair saying it was an easy journey. But at you, as you said, I am two thirds down the road. Mm. Yeah. So one third is remaining. So the nice part is yet to come, but we're not there. I mean, yet. And that's why I think having us today talking about our journey yes. is for us a reminder of where we were and where we should not go back. Exactly. And, and, and how, you how to sustain but more importantly, stay focused mm. and stay humble to where we are. We still did not accomplish. So yes, you are congratulating us for our 40 kg mark, the seven months, but we owe you 60 kgs. So where it was that. <laughs> Indeed, thank you. Manisha, how do you feel after losing 40 kgs in seven months? Because I remember, you know, it, it seems like 23rd of December, you just came to me and uh, you sat with me and I know I mean, I knew you before and you were my old client and you left and you did not continue. You know, it's not like I'm, I'm an angel and I'm God that when I'm meeting my clients who actually gave up on me and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel nice to meet them again when they have put on more weight and whatever the weight they have lost with me, it's not there and it's not a nice thing, but I can't give up. I, I know that what they go through and what you are going through and I think... I met you and you wanted to join Kaizen. It seems like it just happened yesterday. Yeah. And today you're sitting here half yeah. the size. How do you feel? Firstly, uh, yes, I'm extremely grateful to you. I cannot start any day without being grateful to you, uh, to this wonderful program, Kaizen by Um Yes, we did a video even yesterday with the 40 kilo drop. You always bring me down and you always use the word or the term we are just getting started. So there is no finish line. There is no end. I will I will be 65, I'll be 55. But from there on, there are no goals to achieve. And I, of course, I feel really a different person altogether. And like you said, it just feels like it happened in the blink of an eye. Or this, and it's done, it was done. Um, I, I am extremely humbled by how you treated me. Uh, you did not give up on me where I clearly came to you with, with the only thing that, look, I want to live. I, I don't know anything. Uh, like Galib, I just want to see two digits on that plate. 
I I I can't uh, keep seeing my life in three digits. That's not normal for me. And so when I could not believe in myself, you gave me that hope. You believed in me. Uh, so for me, that is the most invaluable thing because when you yourself don't trust your own body, your own mind, mm-hmm. someone else can see envision that for you. I'm sure in the very first meeting of ours, you already made up your mind that this is what I plan for my vision, and I did not even know if I will come tomorrow to this gym. So for me, that's very powerful. For me, that is something. Very precious that I can't lose. So thank you for making me understand what a good life is and leading it daily for me to see. Thank you, thank you very much. From one uh, thirty-five to right now ninety-five, from uh, one twenty-five to eighty-five kgs, eighty-four kgs. Oh wow, you drop one more kg now, <laughs> which is uh, which is just amazing. And uh, uh, you know, many people ask me that, how do you do it? If I'll be honest with you, I also don't know how do I do it. I just do it. I just do it every day. That's it. If I knew, maybe I would have just, uh, you know, wrote thesis and just given to other people, and so that you can also do it. Because the world needs the books and the videos. I mean, whatever we can do, we do it. But it's not, it, it's not how it works. But uh, yes, I don't know how do I do it. As you said, like I knew, you may not come the next day because you have given up all these years on you. Why would you not give up on me? I mean, I'm, who am I to you? And what am I taking from you? I did not take your car. I did not take your house. I did not put a gun on you and say like, now you have to follow, otherwise I will shoot you. I didn't do any of that. I just said what I said, and with purity of my heart, like the, with genuineness, hundred percent genuineness, that as the last word of my life, that if I am telling you, and the same thing I would tell you, if you say like, yes, sir, this is the last time you are speaking. Tell me what you want me, what you want to say. This is what I would tell you: transform, live a better life, live your life to the fullest. And this is what I will tell you as my last word, and that's what I said at that time. Uh, so I think uh, more than this, I don't know how do I do it. Mm-hmm. Nigi, it's uh, quite surprising that uh, among three of you, you are not the one who actually started with the heaviest weight. One thirty-five, one twenty-five. Here you are. One. I'm the lightest. One eight point two. <laughs> One one eight point two kgs. So you have lost your forty kgs in seven months, and now you are seeing many people losing forty kgs in seven months. Two of them are sitting right here. How do you feel? So first of all, I think it's iconic that uh, you have three people sitting here who've had the same kind of uh, not growth curve, loss curve. Which uh, I know people can think uh, with me that it was a miracle, but it's not. So I'm extremely proud of you, and it just goes Thank out you. to say say the work that you do, and I'm extremely proud and happy for you guys. Okay, I think so. For me, my seven month, forty two kgs weight loss happened in twenty twenty one. You know, which feels like years ago, but I still remember. I'm wearing an orange dress. I'm in your office. It's March, and I'm just I'm I'm so confused, right? So first of all, I didn't even know at that time is this normal? Is this a rapid rate? Is this easy? Because I feel like I was discovering and learning everything about fitness through yeah. each day that I was going with you. But uh, every day that I live the way I do after meeting you has been incredible. Has been growth for me. Has been positivity for me. Has been healthy for me, and it's just been amazing. It's. Uh, It makes my parents happy. It makes me happy. Um, so at that time, perhaps I didn't know what to process. I didn't know if this is how people lose weight because I never wanted to lose weight. I was very happy as a, you know, obese person. I thought life was good. Um, but it's amazing that we got those results, and uh, it's amazing that you guys have got those results. And I think, yeah, as I echo the same sentiment that, uh, you know, living life this way has been nothing short of iconic. Indeed. Okay. So as I said, this video is going to be about what you shouldn't do after mm. losing weight, especially after losing 40 kgs, because in today's time, people, uh, especially when you are living in in uh, a country like UAE and all the developed countries, you lose weight, you gain weight, you lose weight, you gain weight, and people don't understand and don't realize that they spend all their life, majority of the time, invested in trying to just lose weight, 
and maintain that weight. That, that was not the purpose of your life to come in this world and try to maintain your weight. Imagine, what's the purpose of your life? To lose weight. H how it will sound? The purpose of my life is to lose. I mean, this is the very quickly you need to fix your life. To fix your life, yes, you need to do this. But then you have to live up to your purpose, right? And now, maybe you never know. I mean, only God knows that maybe that is the purpose that has become now for me and for you guys to actually put people on track. So that's why I have got some questions which I'm going to ask you guys about what you shouldn't do to lose weight. So I will ask one by one and you can, I will start with you Ghalib first. Uh, you know, you are eating a certain kind of food since last seven months since you have joined me. And I have given you many different diet, diet plans and you know, uh, played around with your calories, play, understood your energy levels, understood your sleeping patterns, underst understood your habits, and then I created a plan for you. So why should you avoid, it's a question, why should you avoid extreme dieting after losing weight, even while losing weight? Why do you think you should avoid this extreme dieting? So there are two aspects, to be honest, Yasser, that I will, I will uh, touch point into. First, there is no single diet plan that you gave us that made me feel like I'm not eating the food I used to eat, right? So I always had in my meal plans rice, I always had bread, I always had a source of protein, be it chicken, uh, uh, fish, sometimes even meat. Uh, uh, it was always clean. So clean food, clean diet which is totally different than what I used to eat, not in terms of ingredient, but the quality of the ingredients I'm eating. So one crucial factor that I really witnessed is not the difference in the type of food that I'm eating, but the quality of the food I'm eating. So that's the first thing. So going back to dieting junk food, I won't do that. That's, that's a fact. Simply because beyond weight loss, I felt the difference the impact on me and on every cell in my body, be it the skin, be it the face, be it the, the, the digestive system, everything was different when I ate clean food. Now, the second component is not only about the quality of the food, but the quantity of the food. And that's the second aspect that I want to refer to. So today I eat 1,600 calories. This used to be me tasting, and I was giving that same analogy, me tasting my wife's cooking. So it wasn't the meal, it was me tasting it. So I used to eat 1,600 calories like this. So it was about me tasting the food of my wife. It was almost what the total intake I'm taking nowadays, which I'm very happy that after seven months, my stomach got shrinked, so I won't be eating that much more. But this being said, I will always be tempted. And simply because I'm living in a place where a way of socializing is to eat. A way of living is to eat. A way of enjoying with others is to eat. I'm thankful that in my journey, I discovered other ways of having fun other than eating with these same people that I am actually going to live with. Now, a crucial component about me going haywire in dieting is driven by my emotions and this now I learned how to control them. The only challenge will be is if and only if I lose the discipline and I think that discipline will help me continue that journey. I, at a certain point when I reached my double digit I faced that ego. So when you are doing us a transformation you do not do only a physical transformation. The more you lose weight, the more your confidence goes up. And at the same time, your ego starts playing. And that's the crucial moment where you are in a position to either control your ego or be controlled by your ego. And that's why I said I need to stay humbled. Because if I allow my ego, my overconfidence to take control, I'm going to go back. And I've seen that on many people on myself, even previously trying other 
type of, of diet that make you lose fat quickly. But what I learned in this transformation is beyond weight loss. It's more about how to control my mindset, my way of, my relationship with food. It is no longer, the food is no longer a tool to make me happy. It's only a tool to make me stay alive, not to give me life. Because initially, it was about to help me get rid of my life. So now it's a totally different concept. Now it's supporting you to live a better life. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay, I will just change the question because you answered about I answered the whole, all, all the from all, because they don't have anything to say about the food now. Manisha, how does discipline play a crucial role in maintaining weight loss and living a healthy life? I believe I could not even lose hundred grams if I did not have a routine to follow. The only reason why I have and we all have been able to lose a massive amount of weight that's a whooping 40 kilos is because you enforced us into a routine. And that routine is so centric to our well being that even one of the aspects of the routine goes haywire there will be a direct impact on the Monday we see. Exactly. That's true. And and you have seen it. I have done all the variations, I have tried all the combinations. Um, you have put us into a very good routine without which if I do a day, I just feel like that day is wasted. Or if I try going against that routine, I, I would just feel like Someone has done something to me, my behavioral patterns are different, I'm more cranky, I'm more angry and me reaching out to, to junk food is more when I am not disciplined. And discipline begins a night prior when you sleep on time. It doesn't begin with the day, okay, I woke up at 4 a.m. No, exactly. you need to sleep on time for 7 hours. That, that was not in me before I met you. Um, if I have work at 8 a.m., I would just wake up by 7.15, quickly dress up and, go, and leave to work. Versus now, I have dedicated three hours early in the morning just for myself. That is the self-respect I have for me. We, we sleep on time, we wake up on time, we eat what is asked to be eaten, and we just don't eat whatever is available in front of us. Uh, the water intake has been on point. I mean, these were the things that we know, but we don't have the courage of following. And uh, without discipline, I think uh, I would not be sitting. You would not see me probably the next day from we started. You would, you would just give up on me. I would give up on myself. So and I'm very grateful for the, for the routine that you have inbuilt into me. Because I do not see a single day without you. If, if you see me with, without doing that routine, you will feel something is wrong with me. I am either uh, moving towards a mental disorder because I, my way of operation at that time is very different. The way I talk to people is very different. I, I sound more rude. I sound like I'm un unhappy with life, even one day without living in this Indeed. And that is what uh, mental health is, right? When you follow disciplined life, you have a better control over your mind and your mind is like aligned with what you want to do. You have a goal, you have task in, in throughout the day. You're not just living for no reason. Mm. And when you live like that, then by the end of the night, you are just so unhappy. Then you get into your phone, television, food, because throughout the day, you just did not live up to your purpose. And when you have wasted your day like that, then night is worse. Day is still okay, but night gets worse then you will eat, you will watch. And you know, sometimes when you, are a, when you want to sleep, but you're so angry with yourself, you, you will not sleep. You will not let your body sleep and you will just punish yourself for going off track and living that horrible day. And that's where, and there is no shame in accepting that because we all have gone through, been there, done that. And especially the people who have put on weight, they live like that every day. It's, I mean, of course, if they were so good in living 
sleeping on time and being so mindful, they would have never mm. put on that 50, 60, 70 kgs extra. Yeah. Right? Can I say something? Sure, sure. So I think the issue that we're all discussing is being <clears throat> overweight, obese. And you don't just become obese. You mm. don't just become o- overweight. And I think when you said the word discipline, it automatically made me think that an ideal my mi- ideal mind is a devil's workshop. When you have nothing to do in your day, you're aimless, you're whatever, then you have no control over what you're eating, how much you're eating. And discipline to me is not just a routine, but I think our days are filled with such, spe- there is a pocket for everything, right? So there's no time to just waste or do something that doesn't fulfill you or add more value to you. The food is controlled. So I feel like, and that's why when we lose that discipline or when things go off track, I was on an eight day holiday and by the sixth day, I'm like, okay, I need my routine back. It's okay to indulge. It's okay to do whatever it is. But the minute it just exceeds a certain limitation and you feel like you're losing a sense of yourself, you crave it and you want it back because yeah. it's that discipline that makes you do what you need to do despite external conditions. That's mm-hmm. what everybody's chasing, right? At least everyone's that overweight because everybody wants the control. Exactly. But I will ask the same question to you also. Um, Nigi is someone who actually made fun a lot of the way I used to live, my discipline. And this is one thing that since my childhood, people made a lot of fun of the way I have been and the kind of a person I am, which, uh, to be honest, it fuels me more. It puts more energy in me because now I have to prove them wrong and prove because if I am so good and I, I accept the challenge and I accept this, that if what I believe is is truth is a is the truth and is honest if i'm being honest it means i'm going to prove and i like it i enjoy it and today she's living everything what she used to make fun of me um, be it uh, sleeping on time waking up on time being punctual uh, she wanted to train at 11 a.m in the morning and now she you know you know that she's she here. opens TYB exactly she opens TYB <laughs> and eating the same food similar I mean she made fun of everything what can I, I used to can I say what I used to call you yeah she used to call me so Subodh 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 from Dilchata uh, <clears throat> yeah so that guy that who he was like so punctual but uh, and that is the reason that they these people made fun of someone who is not you but uh, in the movie someone who is disciplined yeah and the whole world has gone to another side because if you are going to make fun of someone who is disciplined in a movie and uh, you're popular then, then exactly then you are just you you will you will make it very uh, sub, which youngsters would not like to be right yeah. because they want to be cool they want to be all uh, you know most wanted person yeah. so but people like me are not most wanted until People actually completely go off track in their life. Then they want someone like me, which is it's a, as I said, like it's a, it's there's always a requirement that we are filling, you know, those gaps. In uh, and I realize that where I can fill, and now I'm not filling just the gap. I'm filling a big, you know, black hole mm-hmm. in the in the in the society right now. So when it comes to discipline, I, for me, discipline is power. It's my superpower. Discipline is something when, when your heart will crumple and your mind will stop working and your body will start shaking, from there I'll say like, yes, I will do it. It's when, you, when you just listen to the routine and you'll say like, oh shit, I have fever now. How am I going to live? No, 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 I cannot. And those are the people when I see like they, they, have, they are, you know, they own all the big brands and they have everything. And when they are like this kind of personality, I already know. I'm already better than this person. I mean, why do I need to why do I need to waste my 10, 20 years to make the same kind of money and same kind of material to just prove that I'm better than him? I don't need to. Why? Because this person is like really just like cannot handle discipline. And I can. And that too so easily. You tell me if I you want me to wake up at 2 30 a.m., 3 30 a.m., 4 30 a.m. You tell me what you want me. You want me to run for 20 kilometers, 50 kilometers, walk. You want me to shift from one country to another country? I don't care because in the end, all these are fears that, oh, you can't do it. No, live one day at a time. If I am living one day at a time, no fear. No fear. There shouldn't, there, when people, why, why people put on so much weight? Because they are living in the future. They just, they have gone 10, 20 years ago 
And all that 10, 20 years of thought process, which they have done over sitting at one place, they did not move that their body that much. So all those calories of like 200,000 or 500,000 calories, which they were supposed to burn with that movement, they didn't burn because they were just sitting at one place and they have stored all that weight and they have become bigger. It's just the stress. They overthink. Overthinking is, oh, these days if you meet any person, I overthink. I mean, it's what a chewing gum that you're chewing? I'm, I'm, I overthink. I'm overthinking. I mean, come on, stop like normalizing this. Overthinking is not a good thing that every everyone, I overthink. I procrastinate as if like, it's, oh, is it your hobby? It's like your favorite time pass. So whenever I am alone, I'm overthinking. I mean, isn't it like these things are so common? Every person is just overthinking. Shame on you if you it, it became the norm. Yeah. In, in, in the time we're living, it became the norm. And we need to help you managing procrastination. Yeah. We need to help you managing your fear rather than solving the fear. Exactly. Why is it here from the beginning, yeah. right? Yeah. So this by itself is allowing or helping people believing that they are okay, they're yeah. normal. Yeah. Right. And that's We're what it should not be. Suffering from yeah, that. Exactly. It's it's a suffering. It's a it's a suffering, and it's just growing and getting even worse day by day. Anyway, so my next question to you, uh, Nigi, <clears throat> what are the dangers of falling into the cheat day mentality, and how can it lead to regaining weight? Uh, when Nigi started, two things were the most common. People used to message me some, sometimes uh, i don't think i told you no uh, sometimes people used to threat threaten me what yeah what Think. kind of what kind of a person you are that you are stopping her to eat a cake and having chai <laughs> this is uh, show me uh, you know like how why she cannot yeah, some 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 people used you to have say lots of followers on social media no, no, but, uh, <laughs> but as i said and i mean i never reply to these people because i don't have to <laughs> I mean, like, who are you, man? Mm -hmm. But anyway, but these, but the thing is that uh, the cheat day and cheat day mentality is like, when can I eat this? And I always reply to people that, so what's your age? Like, so 25, 30, 35. Weren't you living, like having cheat day <laughs> every day, all these 30 years, and you still want it without even getting anywhere? So what do you think? What is your take on this? Because you, I think you're someone who has, who has gone through it. Yeah. who loved it, now, then you hated it also and here you are. So for me personally, I think I'm one of those people that if you give me a finger, I'll take your whole hand. So don't give me the cheat day because I'll make it a cheat month. Uh, but more than that, I want to talk about something you mentioned when we were in Bali. Mm. And we got really excited looking at ice cream and pretending like we all behave like we've never seen sugar in our life. I think one of the biggest reasons that you'll hear in the world when it comes to weight gain or eating is, oh, I'm an emotional eater, I'm a stress eater. You're attaching food with an emotion, right? And I think what you said is don't attach either happiness or sadness. And I think if one can crack that, then life will be really good. I still remember I'm, I finally hit my goal weight, 65 kgs, and I go up to him and I'm like, so today I get to eat an acai bowl, right? Because we were in Bali. He said, any day but today. He said, you can eat it tomorrow. You can eat it day after, but today you will not get anything. Because I don't want you to get overjoyed, overhyped just because of this. I want you to normalize food in your life, right? This is one. And two is I like how you, you know, treat your, I'd say, I won't call them cheat meals. I'd call them carb heavy meals. Now I understand. Carb load. Carb load, Carb load right? Yeah. I think uh, this I think is, is very, very strategic. Perhaps this way of thinking is something you reach when you hit certain fitness goals. So for instance, like I know, like I've heard him say so much, it's my, it's my carb load day, it's my carb load day. So he, first of all, he knows that, listen, next Monday, I'm going to go crazy on my deadlifts. I'm going to lift heavy. I'm going to have a running routine, whatever it is. So that Sunday, he'll have a gracious meal, right? And it won't be a cake, it won't be sugar, it'll still be nutritious, but he'll have like a massive biryani or like massive chicken piece or like it'll, it'll, it'll be nutritious. And I think I, w I would love to reach that goal or that way of life where, hey, I know I'm going to train hard and there'll be some days where it's heavy, it's this, 
uh, you know, and it's light. But I know my, my routine is so planned and it's so thought of that that Sunday I'm going to indulge. And I think that is idealistic for me. And that's why I want to be. But uh, I think for me, this cheat day mentality, because then what happens is, oh, am I losing weight to reach the cheat day? So that I, you know, go back on my, this thing. I think when you're starting your weight loss journey and when you're that obese, forget indulges, become like Manisha, who hasn't had a cheat day, doesn't want it also, uh, in like seven months perhaps. Uh, I don't want anybody to be fearful of food. But I think it's normalizing that emotion with food, which is I think uh, goals. I, I think uh, a little bit if I add on this mm. is uh, it shows a lot uh, the kind of surrounding you belong to, the kind of people you're surrounded by. I've been training since last 22 years, more than 22 years now. And uh, uh, until I came to Dubai, I got to know that there is a weekend. There is something called that th those days used to be Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, something. I never had a weekend. I never took off. I never. Uh, here only I got to know, so you don't have a cheat meal and someone, one of my client only, oh man, let's go and have a burger and a milkshake. Once I tried that milkshake, is I mean, I in my life, I made, maybe I had twice milkshake. I mean, it's disgusting. It's just <laughs> sugar and nothing else. It's disgusting. This is some, okay, burger I like, but uh, with milkshake and chocolates and I don't know what these things, I mean, what people are so crazy about and then uh, it's been nine years now I'm here in Dubai and yes I do eat uh, burgers, pizzas and many things and sometimes ice creams also and sometimes but it's never like a, I have a cheat day or cheat meal I'm going to eat this I'm going to go this culture because I'm too busy building my life man I'm just too busy improving myself then to go and try different restaurants and try different food I mean why can't I have the same food every time What's the problem? I am too busy and too focused on lifting heavier and too busy and too focused on running longer and improving my aesthetics and looking good and feeling good and uh, fitting into better clothes and traveling the world and building my empire. I don't have time to go to a place, it's a new place, let's try food over there. I mean, and then what will happen? How long that happiness will stay with me? Two minutes? Five minutes? I don't want to be happy for five. I want to be happy for the rest of my life. And I know that the price I have to pay with discipline and sadness. So I'm ready to pay that price to be happy for the rest of my life. And in the end, I want to leave a legacy, you know, for, for the people who are who I am leaving behind, be it my clients and be it my kids, whoever, whoever I associate my life with, they should never. And this is one thing which, which I told myself, whoever I meet in my life, they should never forget who Yasser Khan was or is, if I am alive, is, and who he was if I am no more. And of course, such impact is not going to be if I am just going and trying and eating every... Because food is something, there was a saying, was a saying, it's no more now, but was a saying, you, what you eat, you become. You are what you eat, right? Because the way it you know, aggravate your hormones, whatever, high fat, high carbs, high protein, you become that. More protein you have, you will have more muscles. More carbs, you will be more softer. More fat, you will have, you know, fattier body. So that's what you become. Why it is so difficult and now these things are no more. These things are gone. The more sugar, okay, you leave you leave the sugar and you see what will happen, how it, it becomes. You leave the sugar at one place and then you, when you do this with your hands, you'll feel like chippy chippy, you know. And that is, that's what you're putting in your system. One cake, one kg. You know how, how much sugar is there in that? The, the milkshake. I mean, how much sugar is in that? And when you put, don't put it in your intestine, just hold it in your hand. Just hold that cake in your hand for two hours and just see how your hand becomes. You, that, that shit you want to put in your system which goes from here and it stays in your system and then it dilutes in your in your system in the in the blood and then the oxygen and the muscles and how you then it reaches to your brain what are you going to think with that what are you going to think with that extra unhealthy food so much food is disgusting I'm sorry it's just disgusting and right now you get to see so many videos on social media getting millions of likes and millions of shares just by this disgusting way of life living. 
And this is, this is the future. What, what future are you talking about? We are in the future. This is the future. We are living that future. And how disgusting it is. Everything what is wrong is just like hyped to another level. And whatever you try to do right, it will not reach anywhere. And now I have accepted. Before, <clears throat> there was a time when I used to feel quite demotivated. Like I'm trying to do something right, but uh, it's not happening and people are not supporting. But then I, when I look back, I said like, stop it. Stop thinking like that. Have you seen the size of TYB right now? Have you seen what happened to you guys? 40 kgs, 40 kgs, more than 50 kgs lost. And have you seen your families are here, your family is here, your family is here, your family, your son comes here, your brother, sister, everyone is here, your mother, so many times, you, your wife is here, your, both of your mothers, like what all the, all the wishes and the, come on, I'm, I'm, do I really care about the likes and the comments on the engagement on my social media? When every time I go home, my mother is like just hugging me, my father is hugging me and they are just so proud and the kind of the what I do because they see your videos, your videos, your videos and everyone what is happening over here. It's, it's some miracle and just don't ask me how I do it because I don't know how I do it. So I think that's why it's, it's very, very important to have the right, right mindset. Well, let's move to the next question. Mr. Ghalib, why is it important to monitor your weight regularly and stay accountable for your journey? <clears throat> to, to make me avoid derailing, to make me avoid overconfident, being overconfident. I mean, and it is something that I'm not really happy with, to be honest. Like, uh, it is genuine that I don't like weighing myself every day because simply my body changes every day. Now, you tell us, you taught us that this is very normal, but over a week on your BCA, that's when we get the relief that, ah, okay, it was changing, but it's, it's normal. And over a, wait, over a week, it, it, uh, it really shows the outcome of the hard work that we put during that week. But it is important so that we do not forget, and especially for people who came from far, they will tend to be, ah, it's okay. I lost it, so I know how to manage it. But if I see it going up, then I will pause because this will help me. And I will only see it going up if I keep on monitoring my weight. So if I let go, I drop the ball, I will go haywire back again because of that overconfident, because of the emotions that come from the past. I wanted to complement something that you've mentioned, Yasser, that lots of our problem are because we think and live in the future. But there is another side of it, that we also live in the past. So lots of our reasons for that cheat day to go haywire on sugar is because we used to eat sugar and feel emotionally happy. And that's where the technique that you taught us, live today. Forget about yesterday. Don't look at tomorrow, live today. If we are able to really live the present moment, we will forget about the emotions and the cravings that we faced in the past, but also forget about the future and live in the moment. And in the moment, fine, I want to eat this piece of cake, eat that piece of cake, but don't eat the entire exactly. cake because in the history, you were not eating because you were like seven months in, in your journey. I think it's a reaction Lots of people who were in our positions, like for seven months, not eating, seeing and knowing that they are allowed for that cheat day, because it's called cheat day, so it's tagged now that I can, I'm allowed to do it. It's because they live in the past. And in the past, it was seven months I'm not eating, now I'm allowed. So this now I'm allowed is making them go haywire. And I think, and this is really, I think, something that we need to realize, if you are earning a cheat day, it's because we hardly work towards it. Don't make these blood, sweat, and tears go in vain. You earn that cheat day, enjoy it. Don't overdo it because if you really enjoy it, you won't eat that much. Exactly. So enjoy that hardly earned 100%. cheat day. I don't go crazy on that. Yeah. yeah.
our mind sees weight loss as a loss it breaches the body it makes it makes the body feel that something wrong is happening and you must hold on to this you cannot lose this weight so whenever we start uh, moving towards living a healthier life it will always uh, keep giving you inputs like so you just have this two three chips nothing will happen just have this nothing will happen what you have imbibed into us is to check the weight daily that is to change my mind patterns that look you were eating what you were eating and you were just gaining and you were not even standing on the scale every day you don't know what wrong eating was doing to you now we need to change those patterns we need to tell our mind that this is for my good this is not happening like it's not a loss don't grief over it and so when i eat every day rightly when i sleep rightly when i take my supplements i'm drinking water i'm less stressed and the next day whatever is the number on the scale i know it by myself i don't know that i just don't wake up on i know monday morning <coughs> before standing on that machine of pc i know it's good because i know i behaved well the entire week there is nothing to feel bad and so i have changed my mind patterns to see weight as how you put things in your body i'm yeah. not like i don't know and that's the reason why i asked you guys to actually check your weight every day because it's i'm trying to teach you that when it, because see people do make mistakes i know all my clients make mistakes sometimes even mistakes means maybe you will not eat what i have asked you to eat you will just skip your meal you will eat late you will sleep late maybe uh, you did not drink enough water uh, maybe you did just 15 minutes of cardio instead of 30 minutes maybe you did not train with full intensity because you were too busy either talking or on your phone or something something was bothering you you will see the impact the next day it's not just cheating maybe you are trying to be trying to do over which i asked you not to do but you're trying to do it that will also impact and that will build more stress and you will see that uh, it's not moving because you would think like okay now i have these 3 months and i will change my life in these 3 months no changing it's not about you changing your life it's about you living your life while making it better while you're making it better so and you're living your life it's not like once you change it and then what you will go back to the same it's about you learning that's why my whole focus after all these years is to to educate people and that's what right now we are mm. you know this is kind of a master class the all the masters are speaking in front of the camera and showcasing their you know the journey to its best because more than half the world is looking for these kind of half the world is looking for these kind of results now if you are talking about half the world i'm talking about at least one person in each family in the world minimum is one per- person and whoever is watching even if they are fit they would want the other person to become like them or become healthier or become like you so they this is going to be something very impactful okay now for nigi i have a question it's, it's a good question for you what role does managing stress and getting enough sleep play in maintaining weight loss and how can meditation help i would know if i slept ha ha i'm just kidding um i think uh, through the four years of my journey i don't think i ever put any importance to sleep and now i would say since the last 8 9 months with your constant reminding uh, i i do i try my best uh, to sleep constant i think i don't think i have missed any day that i did not remind you um about sleep you don't miss a day you're very disciplined anyway um i used to deprioritize sleep i used to think that if i sleep 3 to 4 hours i would still show up to the gym and you know all of that and i used to think i'm some superstar you know trying to manage my day but i think that was the dumbest thing i could do um i think there are a lot of things more so as a woman that sleep affects your cycle your hormones but i would just be so irritated all the time and um, you know i feel like my workout suffered also on a lot of days and hunger i would actually end up feeling and eating more on the days that i wouldn't sleep well 
and I think um, stress. I, I I I tend to take a lot of stress because of work. I've gotten far better, uh, and I think that is related to detachment, right? Detach detachment to anything that adds stress to your life. It could be work. It could be relationships, which is where meditation comes into place. So I think all of it is so interconnected. um you know to just being a little more mindful 10 minutes if i take to myself to my day to just close my eyes listen to my spiritual music and just release my thoughts the good the bad whatever it is actually helps me reassure myself of certain emotions that i should have to things that impact me family love friends work and it's important because these things do play a role with your diet with how you are and like overthinking whatever you want to call it right they affect your mood So if I can tell anything to anybody and myself included is to at least sleep 7 hours a day if possible 8 Correct uh, there is one very big um side effect of not sleeping properly is uh, especially if you are someone who is trying to lose weight you will have loose skin especially if you are going to have that loose skin when you are trying to lose that weight in the older age after 30 and obviously you will have loose skin because you yeah. are like 50 60 kg is heavier but now the chances of having it is 90% higher if you are not sleeping because your skin is not connecting to your muscles because you are not giving enough because there is not enough growth happening muscles are not muscles cannot build without the sleep right and especially if you are a woman you know you don't have testosterone so muscles will be the process of building that muscle is much more slower than a man so that's why men will not have that loose skin you know uh, as much issue as much as women so these women when they trying to lose weight they can easily do botox they can easily go for the plastic surgeries but uh, they will just not sleep i i don't know what is there they will just not do the right thing they just no don't talk about doing right thing I I can't. I want to just look good by losing weight, but I will not do the right. No matter what happens to me, no matter how I destroy myself, my body, my mind, but don't ask me to do what is right. I will do wrong, and I will look amazing. And this is I don't know why. I mean, why? Why would you put yourself through all of this? And the simple thing is, switch off your phone, switch off your television, switch off the people who you talk to, and just sleep on time and wake up on time. Okay, and ask these people, what did you? I mean, how how much difference would it make if you would have slept at that time in your life? I mean, maybe money. Maybe you would make fifty uh, million more, or maybe you would have a perfect relationship today. Maybe you would have two more kids. I don't know. I don't know what. Maybe five more cars. Maybe what material? Maybe more jewelry. So, I mean, none of that exists. None of that is there. Then why didn't you sleep? Why did you sacrifice your sleep? If you had, do you even remember one movie that you watched on that night? Mm. Do you even remember one drama that you have watched? Do Do you even care? Do you do Do you have any? good feelings about the fights you have all those nights about your close ones do you even remember what you fought for <laughs> but only thing is stays now is your loose skin and your hair fall and this and that everything now because sleep is is so important but in today's capitalism they have multiplied the less sleep and all the successful people sleep less they show but trust me they don't it's a very big lie it's a very big lie and all the successful people if they actually take action against the people who showcase that these people sleep so less they don't they don't it's just the capitalism which multiplies on these habits because they want people to sleep less i want to say something i think initially now that i think about it i think i was trying to you know people please my that back then surrounding by staying up at night and doing things from my old lifestyle but i also wanted to kind of be the healthy and fit nikita which is why i think <clears throat> i was not sleeping i'm not saying that is the right thing to do but i think it's been a transition journey does that make sense can i build on that yeah yeah please so, go so ahead. basically i think and and again let's remember from where do we come 
right? So we come from 40 kgs extra, years and years of not sleeping, of not eating well, of not... So there is a past. We come with a big luggage. And it is not easy to change everything at the same time. And historically, what we used to think, even doctors used to say, it's all about diet and exercise. So as long as we focus on diet and we are exercising, then everything is fine. And I think one of the differentiator of our journey here at TYB and joining Kaizen uh, by Yasser Khan is simply that we are understanding more what's happening inside our body. I bet that lots of our audience do not know the information you just said. And they all, like, I have a friend who was like, man, in seven months, 40 kg, you're full of loose skin. You know what did I do? I just yeah. took off my t-shirt and I said, show me. And it's when they see that in seven months, and this guy does not have loose skin, that they understand that what we are doing is different. And yes, it is different, Yasser. I mean, you are talking to us as if we are athletes every single day. But for us, no, we have a journey of 40 years, personally, of 40 years. Exactly. Of, Not for me. You, for me, you are an athlete. Uh -huh. That's what I'm making no, but you. What I meant, absolutely. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm coming about to say. That we are 40 years of unhealthy people. And in seven months, I'm ready to go for your 10K. All of us. Do you do you remember the? Uh, have you seen the movie Forrest Gump? Yeah. Right. The whole world says like he cannot walk. That girl said like, "Run, Forrest, run." I'm asking you, just run, Forrest, run. That's it. And I don't believe that where you're coming from and what's your story and why you cried and why you depressed. I don't care. I don't give a damn about those things because if the closest people, be it your parents, be it your uh, siblings, be it your husband, wife, girlfriend, whoever. If, or friends, if they were me, you would not be here. And you would have never put on because I don't care. It was your choice and you made the wrong choice. Why should I care about your wrong choice and actually, yeah, give you sympathy, yeah, you're right, where you're coming from. You're coming from where? Nothing. You're coming from nowhere. Here you start and you live your life, just run, forest, run. You are going to run. Just run and nothing else. And that's the belief I have that day one, day one, Right now, you're sitting with 40 kg down, all of you. You are 136. Any trainer you go to would be like, uh, I can't promise and I cannot tell you if uh, you are going to lose any weight. But yeah, you can pay me I and, and I, will, I will just take the money. And that's what happens. But what do I say? This is the weight you are going to achieve. Do you know how scary it is for any person to actually give these words and so, especially someone like me who is the man of his words. I mean, I believe in my commitment and I should never back down from my commitment. And giving that to someone who I don't even know who this person is and what will happen the next day, whether this person will come and join me or whether it's come. Even many people, they pay and never show, never show up. But I just say what I say. So this is, this is the difference, Khalif. I'm not here to... to no, no, I'm not here to accept what, where you have failed. I don't believe in that. I don't trust that. I don't care if you have slept, if you have not slept, if you have eaten, not eaten, whatever your habit, because if I do, then who else will give you this? Because everyone did, right? Everyone, oh yeah, yeah, you are right, you are right. Yeah, actually, yeah, of course, obviously, you know, where you have come from, of course, or the 42 years you have lived like that, then just die like that only, no? Why do change? And this, and this is, Please don't take it as my arrogance, but this is my belief. And I know that I know that's what has taken me here in, the, in my life. I, when I, no matter who you put in front of me, if I decide something like it's a night, it means it's a night. It doesn't matter. You say like, no, there are two sons out there. How can you say it's, for me it's a night and I will call it a night. You know, like, and that's a strong belief. Of course, the experience with you, you know, in continuation to what we discuss. In the last seven months that we have trained and, you know, we've gone through Kaizen's, there was not a single day where you told me, Misha, today you have to do a squat of 80 kilos. Or today you need to do deadlift of 80 kilos. But there was every day that you asked me, how did you sleep? Mm -hmm. So your emphasis on recovery was more than what I do in the gym. 
and there were uh, i mean i have seen weight loss week after week but there were weeks where i was like hello yes i'm doing everything i'm eating i know people who are not eating i'm drinking my water i'm doing everything that i can but before i sleep i sleep with a thought or during the day i hold emotions that why the hell am i not losing and i have it on my whatsapp you I've, I've given you a big story that yes sir my weight is not going down this is bothering me this is bothering everything that i do i will just move out of this and you just wrote one line fix your sleep share with me a good screenshot of your sleep hours i did everything it's it's three word sentence sleep and i did that i left everything i started going to bed to cover up for the for the sleep test I I went out to sleep by six thirty seven because I was not sleeping the entire two weeks before that. I was not giving my body that kind of rest, and 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 just three days into sleeping properly, it's all wrong. So there you go. if if there are five things you do and you you think that okay I did four out of five, the most important governing it is the sleep. If you don't do the sleep, I mean in my experience I've had it. It's out. Exactly, and and I tell you one thing. Um, see, belief is a thought, basically, and how much neurons you accumulate, the number of neurons, it will become a belief. It's a thought initially. It's just a thought. If it's just a weak thought, it will come and go. It will mm. pass. The more you will hold on to it, it will become your belief. Mm. and that is the reason i know you guys are not uh, athlete or bodybuilders or celebrities or i don't know what x y z but you have a brain you do have a mind and it's not a big deal to build that belief what i just believe what i say and I start believing because it's for you not for me hmm. i i i don't want other people to believe for me but i know you do want me to give you that belief and that put that seed in your mind that thought because till now it it did not it didn't exist till now so i just give that thought with 100% with full power and that's the thing what people cannot see it my product is me giving you just that thought with all my neurons with the power and that power also comes with others transformation i i know what i do very well people just don't understand what i am doing and they understand after 2 3 years actually oh this is this is what he was doing oh so that's how he built the whole tyv no wonder why he is transforming hundreds of clients like every 3 months oh so that's how he built the kaizen now oh, okay but this was happening like 2 3 years ago i didn't, i didn't we didn't realize what he was doing because if it is so quick it's just a copy right anyone can copy me very quickly but this what we are talking i'm doing it i mean nigi knows me since very long then manisha knows me after that and now you know me i'm doing it since last many years she she's uh, you know uh, proof uh, or she knew i have shared a lot with her manisha knew that what i was doing and what I, everything what we are doing today i have told them i have told everyone that this is what is going to happen now it's much more happening but what happens because how to make you do it because the same process i follow for me same inspiration and the same style of mind coaching i do to myself it's just i have that tools to do it i know how to do it i know what i should read before i go to bed i know when my heart is broken when i'm falling apart and when i'm like all completely shattered i know the things the material i need to read and who i need to look up to and what i need to do and where when while i am meditating in which day when i had nothing what are those days and what are those months and years of my life i need to connect with and bring that material and that feeling back in my heart and put that belief in my mind again if i could do it at that time and if i could survive and if i am still alive it means i can do it for the rest of my life until i am i'm alive no one can stop me i go i do all of that that's my process that's how i stand on my feet again and again and every day it's not like i am uh, uh, i am someone who is just like you know someone comes and 
put the key in me and then like, okay, fine, now start. Okay, now you're fully charged up, now go, switch on. There's no switch on and switch off. I'm, I'm hu as human as anyone else and I'm, I, I would say like I'm more human than other people because that's the, that's the reason why I, just, I, I don't just throw sweet words in front of people. I, I make them live through that sweet life and not just words. No matter how I speak to you, how is going to change? Like your five minutes and ten minutes? For me, the most important thing is how I'm going to change your life entirely. And as I said, it's uh, the most important thing is that belief that which I have, which I use for me, and it's working. In the end, it's working for everyone. Can I comment on that? Uh, yes, because please. I think it's a very important point and something that is common to all of us in terms of, and all others, people here at TYB by Yasser Khan. What really differentiates our journey is that we are mentored uh, by someone who has lived that experience, who knows the process, but who is with us on daily basis in the field, in the gym. We see him. Today, I don't know if you remember, but I told you I'm doing the lunges. I was doing lunges and you were coming in front of me. And I said, I'm doing the lunges like this because I saw Yasser Khan doing it like this. So you walk the talk. And this is by itself a teaching mechanism for us. And when we see you, the way you eat, the way you train, the way you act, the way you think, the way you meditate, this by itself is teaching us how to do it. And again, we're taking baby steps as compared to your 22 years of experience in that. But again, that's how we are seeing the difference. Now, if people choose not to see these things, they won't get the results. And you made it very clear. There are different components other than the simple diet and exercise. Your sleep, your mental states. I mean, governments are looking at it now as an integrated approach. And Kaizen by Yasser Khan, actually Yasser Khan, is bringing these four pillars into life. Nutrition, fitness, mental state, and sleep. And we are living it on a daily basis through you, like seeing you doing it. And I think this is also the differentiator that is making us get. And you know, of the funny part, if anything I dislike the most is when people see me eating. I don't like anyone to see me eating. And I am a very, I'm, in my personal life, I'm an extremely shy person. Even the normal people, people, if they just stare at me, I, I will shy. That's my, in my personal space. But of course, when I'm at my work, I'm the lion. You know, I just do whatever I want to do. Why do you think that I do everything openly? Otherwise, I have my private uh, VIP area. I have the whole gym. I can train whenever I want, whenever I can, you know, whenever the things are like quiet. But uh, because I want to show, because I want you guys to learn, because I want you guys to adapt. And that's the reason I eat, because I know many people complain, because Oh, how long will I eat? How because I eat the same food every day in front of everyone, so that you never come. You never come to me at least to complain. Because if you come, I say like, same. I'm eating the same food. You have a problem? Okay, then eat mine. I will eat yours. Maybe there will be some difference. So yeah, that's the. But that's the funny thing is like I never want anyone to see me eating. But I know this. This helps. Purposefully, purposefully, I am doing it strategically. And I know that it's impacting, it's helping, as you said clearly. Everyone sees me eating. The reason I do it, because I want you to see it. Nothing, I, I do nothing just for nothing. Everything is there for a reason, because yeah. I believe every moment of my life, I want to live up to its best, not just casually. Okay. <clears throat> How, to you, to you, the question is to you. How can your surrounding environment and support system impact your ability to sustain weight loss? Uh -huh. It's a very good question because uh, my first cousin, I was just battling uh, environment at home wherein I am standing here trying to eat healthy, trying to sleep on time, trying to be the right for myself and an entire family of 8 to 15 members 
who is just not willing to look at me, just not willing to hear me, uh, willing to have a slice of pizza just next to my face. Mm. Yes. And it was initially very difficult for me to control. But that helped me. That helped me decide that, okay, I'm good even without eating that because the next morning when they woke up after eating that slice of pizza, they felt miserable. Versus when I woke up after eating my good paneer, my good salad, my good egg whites, I was much more energetic. Now it got difficult because I was the younger one to tell them that, look, what you're eating, what you're doing is wrong. Stop it. Don't do this. Or, or, or don't come my way. At least let me do what I want to do. But that's when my entire discipline, my routine came into picture that I will not control you. Initially, I used to always try to control everything around me and I used to feel um, devastated. I used to I used to be more angry that nothing is in my control. Versus when I started taking care of my own food, I, I was having my meal plan. I don't want to depend on anyone. I don't want to make mistakes on food. It helped me be more focused on myself. So the control of me was on me. The first thing that you have to control is yourself. And we are going out to control the world. It's not going to happen. Uh, I, I tried to tell my, my immediate family members that please switch. I mean, I come from me and I both come from the Sindhi community where we eat food like there's no tomorrow. Like there's <laughs> Even no our Arab yeah. community, my dear. Like <laughs> not only the Sindhi community. You know, God is going to take life from you the very next minute. So eat as much as you want. Like papards is something that is a mandate. Uh -huh. You need to have papad and I think one papad takes 7 to 14 hours to digest. And and it's mindless eating, you're eating 3 to 4 papads. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, but this is my box. I, I'm eating this. Do you not feel anything for me? I think I transitioned from there to a point where I stopped controlling these people in my family, in, in my workplace. To the point that they kept seeing me, they kept seeing me improving, they kept seeing me in, you know, eating my food. And there came one day where uh, my sister, my eldest sister, was like, I don't know what to do about my diabetes. It's just not in control. And I looked at her and I was like, please show me your order history from the food apps. Uh, uh, the house is stocked up with namkeens, the house is stocked up with chips. And how are you expecting your diabetes to be okay? It's not going to be okay. That was my second cousin. When the first cousin was, please, please, please don't do this. Please, please, please. And everyone giving me a blind eye or deaf ear. The second cousin, okay, she's so, um, she's so motivated. She's so disciplined. Very nice. I'm having this problem. How can you help me with this? I just have stomach area. What, what can I do for this? Thing? My office colleagues, yeah, you've lost so much weight. I just have stomach area. How can I lose this? What, what should I eat? What are you doing? Then when we moved towards the end of the second Kaizen or my third Kaizen and I started, people walked up to me and they were like, we've been wanting to do this. Please tell me how. So the surrounding completely changed. I no more had to tell my sister or my brother-in-law, what are you doing with your life? Your kids are looking at you. you know, stop. It was just one line. You want to change your life? This is what I'm doing. It has helped me. You can see it has helped me. You think it will help you? Follow what I'm doing. And it's not that for the last seven months I was doing, if they would have just followed blindly, it would happen. It would not because it takes conscious efforts. It takes guidance that I seek from you on a daily basis to fix my uh, neural networks off my mind. It, it just moves from food. I myself was a person like that. Back in December, if you opened my food apps, emotional eating, emotional happy, crying, uh, angry, bad day at work, fought with friends, fought with someone, fought with parents, fought with family, you just ordering food. Only the red sauce pasta can make me feel good. Only the walks in my nachos can make me feel good. Nothing on earth can make me feel good. Versus today where I build my community first from day by day. And I'm thankful to you for that because I learn daily from Galib, I learn daily from Nikki, I learn daily from multiple people that I am with. I learn from you. I mean, I look at you and I'm like, if he is doing it and if he's asking you to do the same thing, we all have the same two eyes, nose, ears, hands, legs. What's the problem? 
and that helped me transition my family to today i mean well it is 8:30 and no one wants to see my face because they know if they come between me and my sleep it's over the day is out no one sleeps peacefully so we all transitioned from sleeping from 11 a 11 pm to 10 9 and now 8:30 because i need to be in sleep by then food habits have changed i mean i got my sister i got my brother in law to guys and these are the same people who used to eat and And they are losing so much weight. Uh, Rohit has lost so much weight, and your your sister, uh, she is not taking her uh, diabetes medi- uh, medicines now. Imagine, just like in fifteen uh, fifteen days only, and she uh, she stopped taking it that time. Now twenty days, she started losing weight, and Rohit has uh, almost lost what eight nine kgs by now, which is imagine twenty days, eight to nine kgs, and. When he met me that time, he was like asking me, "Yes, sir, do you think I can lose weight?" I was like, "I don't think, man. If I think, why would you be here?" I mean, you asked him what his water it. intake, exactly. and he does not know what his water intake is, but he knows what his uh, aerated drink intake is. That That's was right. that was like that, and I That's sitting right. next to him, I was like, "No way can I see my nephew growing up." Uh, the same or or fighting the same battles that I have all my team, all my twenties. No, I don't want him to be that, going through that. Why? When we when we pursue education, we we look up to our siblings. When we pursue career, we look up to our siblings. So these are failures. Mm. That they they are clear failures that is in my body, and it's it's generation after generation. So why will I pass on this? Mm. To my kids, my sister's kids, or anyone. Indeed, hundred percent. And uh, no, beautifully, Manisha, what you said, and uh, now your sister is here, and your brother-in-law is here, and I'm sure your mother always, you know, put a comment. And when I met her, and I think, uh, inshallah, more people will join from your family, and we are going to change everyone. We will not leave a single person who is not fit and healthy and mentally fit, who is strong. Who is independent? This is the true meaning of being independent. Where people think like you are being independent means you make money and you spend money. Okay, but uh, <laughs> what does that even mean? Are you healthy? Are you fit? Are you mentally strong? Can you handle your stress every, on on your day to day? Who cares how much money you make? Because you are not you. You are living someone else's life. What do you? What will you get? after just being independent financially that is just one area of life financially is external internal is your health and body that's the only proof that you are alive even if you are poor you are still alive even if you are rich you are still alive so why do you pay so much attention that i want to be independent because i make my money and i spend my money and what about the other things what is more important than money money comes once you have life when you are alive then only it matters if you're not alive if you don't have a body and you know we have seen in covid people had a lot of money and they could not seem uh, save themselves and their uh, loved ones what and independent all the people who have made try to be independent for the next 20 30 years where that money is gone and still people are still blind they are still living because they are even more horrible horribly living and they're not seeing that being independent is this is independent you don't depend on anyone physically and mentally if you are crying to everyone and spoiling their time and their life about everything what you go through where are you independent you are dependent on everyone about your emotional baggage and every if every time you are every, emotionally down you exactly. go for sugar then you are dependent exactly. in you're your dependent, life 100%. on sugar so where is that independent you make making money is even spoiling it more because now you have your leverage to to eat to buy to purchase instead of changing your life that is even worse right and these are the things i i i don't speak all of that so much but uh, i study there is nothing i will go i will get involved and when you are talking to me and you are talking to me you are talking anyone who is talking to me my subconscious mind is reading everything reading your emotions i am listening to your words but my subconscious mind is constantly reading scanning everything okay so why is happening why she is saying this why he is saying that why he is talking like this why she is talking like that 
Okay, then what happened? Then who said this? Who's, because for me, that's my superpower to just study patterns, understand patterns. That why? Because I want to help in the end. I need to have a solution of your root cause of the problem. Not the problem, root cause of the problem. From where is generating? Okay. Now, Nigi, I have a... I was sorry. So sorry, one point I remember. It's, it's when I said no to these surroundings. Be it my family, be it my workplace. I mean, it's a culture to have biryani after Friday namaz at my office. Everyone is having it. And I, I pulled out from there and that all helped me easily say no for cheap meals. I stopped. There was no emotion when everyone is eating in front of me and I'm not. That made me so strong that okay, you can eat the pizza in front of me. I don't feel anything anymore. I will eat when I want to eat. I will not eat because it's a, it's it's the occasion because it's Friday after prayer, so we eat. No, I, if I want to have the biryani, I can eat it whenever I want. It's not. It's when I started saying no to so many things, and you know, whenever someone asks me, you don't feel you don't crave for a pizza, you don't crave for a. I don't. It's you who asked me multiple times, Manisha. It's the time to cheat. It's you. You must indulge today. So don't ask me. I don't feel like eating that. That uh, one in Ramadan. Ramadan. Yeah. Um, iftar. Kaisen, I think yeah, end of first kaisen, first kaisen, we kaisen, had iftar. Yeah. I didn't want to eat. Uh, of recently, we had our you versus you, and you wanted us to perform optimal, and that was your thought of allowing allowing us to cheat meal. It was the first time I cheated. And I was like, okay. And I had no emotions. I was like, it's just like I'm eating my daily food. Yeah. So that relation of food has really... Amazing. Okay, Nigi, I have a great question for you. Why is it important not to be satisfied with just one goal after losing weight? And how can setting, how can setting new goals keep you motivated and on track? So, I have so much to say about this. Because, uh, you know, now that I look back, I I think 13, 14 months into my journey, September 2021, we hit 50 kgs, which wasn't my ultimate goal. I was still this thing. As I get said, 50 kgs are done. I was getting praises from everyone. And I even asked you, like, what? You know, you were like, we are just getting started. I was like, when are we ever going to stop? Are we always going to just keep getting started? Like, we're done with 50 kgs. Hogya, 14 months, I'm done training. Enough. And now, and I told you this two, three days back, that yeah, what Ghalib said that according to us, weight loss was all about diet and exercise. 2022, 2023, I'm going to the gym every day, huh? And I thought that's it, that's what it's supposed to be, but I was gaining weight. And you know, it's after finishing the first Kaizen, Jan to March of 2024, I realized, oh my God. Was I Dilulu? Because I thought that just training, and especially being someone who's obese, not having a tougher goal to achieve made me just completely slack off. And I realized that I'm actually not operating on my optimum, or at my best. I was just doing actually the bare minimum. I thought I was fit, but I was fat. I will call an 80 kg body fat. I'm sorry, but like when I've been 65, like that's that's a fat girl. And I don't, and you know, everyone's like, when I tell this, my sister's like, dude, do you remember who you were? Like, do you know where you come from? You don't give yourself enough credit. Yeah, I get it. But if Shah Rukh Khan kept telling himself my first movie was a success and doesn't keep working hard, he wouldn't be the biggest superstar that, you know, there is. And I think through my fitness journey and every day in the gym, I've realized what my potential is. And if I'm going to be complacent and if I'm not going to go for the next tough thing, Khalas, I will, I will be irrelevant in my own eyes. Exactly. And I know I asked you, I was like, really, when is it ever enough? Like, can you stop? Like, what is this? Next goal, more, now body fat percentage, this aesthetic, that aesthetic, Lara Croft. I don't want this. And I just realized that, you know, because like, that's just stupid. And it is very important to have goals. It is very important to keep, you know, because I think this is our brain. We want... So so how, how I, uh, I say this, then how, now since you guys are sharing your, uh, you know, your journey in 40 kgs and I know that I teach you guys how to work and I also know that you guys make, have made many mistakes and I think 
that's why I've got Nigi here, though her journey is completely different and she has achieved this 40 kg mark three, more than 40 kg mark three years ago. And then she got stuck. That's why she is here. So that anything what I tell you guys, it's not just me telling you, but I have already seen her failing for a couple of years. And then that's why I'm telling you. Now I'm telling you even more important things. I see all my goals is a part of the big goal. So I see my all my goals in life. All my goals are just battles. War is when I will die. And I know I have to lose that to my death. I'm not going to win the war. I'm going to lose the war. That's why I want to win all the battles until I lose the, the war of my life to death. But that war, I will lose, I will just lose my body in that war. But my spirit and my legacy will win and it will live on. That's the whole idea. That's how I see life. And if I cannot see life like that, then I have seen pre in, my, in, in the past when I was just, you know, 13, 14 years old and I had a goal to, I want to be on the cover page of men's health. I had to learn English for that and I had to travel in different cities in India just to be, a, just to be on the cover page of men's health and at, at the age of 20, I gave one of the auditions and then I got selected at the age of 21, I was on the cover page of men's health and yes, there was a big drop in my motivation because that was the, that was the goal of my life and I have achieved that. I have achieved the pinnacle of, uh, you know, as a fitness model or someone as a fit, fit guy. That was the best. Uh, same time, all of my famous celebrities was uh, my favorite actors. They were on the cover page of the same magazines, um, the cover page on the same magazine. And then I learned, okay, no, I need to have another goal. Then so many people in my city, this, I mean, where I've come from, these things are next to impossible for someone like me to achieve at that time, 15 years ago. Uh, and they said like, oh, it was just by accident or something, something he did that he got this. I said like shit. No, I I cannot be. I cannot live like this. That my hard work cannot be by accident. It's excellence, not by accident. And I need to work harder now. I started working again. Then got into television. Got into other ads and magazines and everything. And then competed. Then worldwide. There is that. And every time, every milestone I was achieving, I was look. I used to drop for a couple of weeks, and I used to lift up myself again. Then eventually, with by that, that's how I have built my mindset. It's not like I was born with this mindset. And when I studied about the most successful people, how they did it, and then I realized that do not set these goals at the ultimate goal. It cannot be. And that that's that that was the time when I maintained this physique. It has been almost like nearly 18 years that I'm in good shape, but literally in to the point shape, I'm um, since last three, four years, like the same. Because it doesn't matter to me if I look like this or if I look like that. I just want to keep doing and I'm living this disciplined life. I mean, Nigi knows me since last four years. You know me since last three years. I don't know when have you seen me not being disciplined. And it's not like that I'm, I'm no, I, I'm always mentally high. I'm not, I'm not. A lot of injuries happen to me. Shoulder surgery happened to me. A lot of things happened in my family. A lot happened to my work. So much happened. But one thing I did not stop is being disciplined. And that's why I think it's, uh, it's important to not... I mean, having goals very important. But all these are smaller goals. And the bigger goal is the whole life. That's the whole goal. I, I wanted to say that uh, we were talking about the discipline and you mentioned about the mistakes. Uh, I, I think one common factor between me and Manisha was Nikita in, in her journey. And we were inspired by the, what she did. And obviously that's the outcome of your uh, uh, hard work. But one other thing that basically we, or personally, I learned from Nikita is how, because again, we're humans and lots of the people listening to us are human and they will find what we are doing. <laughs> exactly. No, but I mean, athlete humans <laughs> and the human.
हाँ आई मीन दे ओल दे ओल मी आई हैव लॉट्स ऑफ पीपल हु आर वॉन्टिंग टू बी इन माई शूज बट दे नीड टू ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट इज वेरी नॉर्मल टू ड्रॉप द बॉल स्पेशली एट द बिगिनिंग और वेन यू स्टार्ट सींग रिजल्ट नाउ वट वी लर्न फ्रॉम निकिता इज हाउ टू अक्सेप्ट दैट मिस्टेक एंड टेक एक्शन and that's why i believe she's my inspiration and she will remain my inspiration whether she's losing weight or returning back to the right track because this is something i respect we will never and you said it in one of your meditations we all do mistakes and i say this to my son you are allowed to do mistakes because you learn from your mistakes but you're not allowed to do the mistake twice the same mistake twice so for someone who has lost 7 in 7 months 40 kg i will i might be at risk of going back but it's because nikita has shown me what i might suffer if i go back and how i need to step in forcefully and take that action i mean she's part of yk now i i think uh, there is a lot of people who shows you that not just her but she, 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 but, but i have not, documented that she is my inspiration yeah, in no way. i know I, no no there is there is other person also ah, let's but not but they also the taught me yeah. what to do and what not to do right yes yes but what i'm respecting here with nikita is again this and this is very important that even if you start your journey and even if you do mistakes in your journey accept them learn from them and stand back and this is consistency and this is in one of it's, your it's the most important thing see mistakes are very important because you will know what to do what not to do yeah. but the problem comes when you bring your ego no it's not my fault i'm not doing wrong i i i'm i'm happy the way i am that's where it goes wrong and that happened between us yeah, yeah. i mean that happens uh, with so whatever you see you see a very filter Filter-ed version of version. nikita uh, very filter which everyone likes because the one which you don't want to see i only deal with and that's a that's a version of her if i will leave that khalas because it, no because if if anyone if any of you i'm not talking about her if any of you had that much sense you would not have reached to 135 125 118 you cannot reach to that level if you had that's the only thing because i'm also a man i also have a many but the only thing i leave that listen man just be on the side let me just be human let me deal with the other human and i leave that on the side and say like okay fine it's okay it's okay i tell myself it's yes sir it's okay focus on your bigger purpose no matter what these people not just her many others no matter what these people are doing to you and no matter how they are treating you just let it go they are not that bad they will come back they will understand the time will come and they will accept and they will follow and they do i mean especially her and that's the reason i'm not saying that i will always do that i know the time will come then i will say like you know what uh-huh. best of luck you have done well good job keep it up and i have done my job and now i need to move on with my life but there will always be a yasser khan available to support anyone who needs but help anyone who needs but not the same person who keep uh-huh. you know repeat as you said like don't make the same but trust me i have supported people not just twice 200 times the same mistake forget about twice you always have big standards so more than two times you allow yes, there is a there is a elasticity the that you can stretch this much only after that you will break it you know it's it's like a that rubber band you can stretch it but after that it breaks with nigi she is been very kind to share her victories at the same time her downfalls hmm. and not many people openly speak about that they always picturize a good uh, day and all of that So I also told you before we were having our conversation that unknown battle is tough. You you don't know what what what's going to come. And today what you both are doing for us is a known battle. You telling me Manisha or Galib, this is what is going exactly, to happen. Yeah. What is your behavior going to be? Choose. Right? That's the that's what this whole video is about. What you should not do after losing weight, right? And she is one of the example. and i'm telling you and i have many examples like that don't worry we will meet those people also in the future and we'll make them sit down and we'll make them tell the truth and how it works because people think like oh wow 
people have lost so much weight amazing good job well done I, they don't know what you know what you go through and what i go through why do i go through all of that yeah. but and not with one not with two with everyone what i go through it i mean they don't know oh yasir is doing this i don't know why he make people do this and i don't know why he says such ask once to yasir yasir are you okay i mean you're dealing with these people their own parents could not dealt with and you are the one who is doing it are you okay is your head is like a, at a place and are you're you okay? okay you feel okay no, but this is the truth right because if it was that easy your parents would have done it yeah no parents want to see their kids with this size i i brought my son to you exactly <laughs> <laughs> it was easier i said I yeah sir please manage ahmed <laughs> i think i've said this before but uh, yeah i think the real journey starts after the weight loss yep i mean it's like it's a different yes. battle you can very easily reach the top yeah. i mean when i say easily it's with blood yeah, sweat yeah, and yeah. tears but it's sustaining that leadership That exactly. is difficult. Oh yeah, because so you same need, in weight loss, same in everything. You need the first of all, you need to work very hard to achieve success, and then you need to work two twice times hard. harder, twice harder to maintain the discipline to maintain the success. Yeah. To build the discipline to maintain the success, twice as hard. First, it was just fifty percent. Now, now this is a hundred percent job, because now one thing, one thing, one thing is there that people first. people wanted you to live a better life a good life until you have become better than them the time you become better than them now the jealousy starts now they don't want because they cannot now you are challenging them to improve themselves and people are lazy especially if they are they were in good shape and they were decent healthy they don't want to work hard on themselves no no one wants to work because they are okay now in today's time who goes to gym only if you want to lose weight if you say like why like if someone like me when i did not have tyb and now i have tyb now they cannot ask me this question that why do you go to gym earlier many years ago they used to ask me like why do you need why do you need to go to gym you are in good shape so only people who are unfit unhealthy are supposed to go to gym so that's why when you are when you become better than other people now it's a different story starts they cannot see you better than them because a direct threat right you know when you lose weight now you guys must be getting a lot of praises from people as i said just now and nigi have uh, she has gone through the whole that uh, process of getting all the praises she still does and i keep telling her you should not get affected you should need you, you need to reach to a point in life where you are not getting affected by the people who says good or bad both uh, you guys must be going through it right now how do you feel about it and how are you handling it so i think the previous question replies on my behalf as well on this is that in terms of goal setting i i accept basically people saying wow uh, uh, we respect your journey we respect your loss this definitely motivates me but moving forward towards my bigger goal so it's all about the goal setting if for me it was only weight loss then when people will start recognizing my weight loss i might become complacent but because i kept and that's what we learn in kaizen continuous improvement right so our goal is to become tomorrow better than today and this continues for good now the more i dropped weight the more i remember you increased and pushed my goal So initially it was 75 kg then it became no let's become seven packs six packs then you said you know what forget about six packs on 30th of december and this is my goal yasser wants me to be like this so that's my cover page right and that's basically what keeps me humble towards these motivation so yes i enjoy people recognizing the effort but at the same time i use it as a fuel towards my bigger goal and i know and you taught us i mean once i reach this you will give me another goal i don't know maybe disappear <laughs> no but this is this is how i have learned right otherwise yeah. otherwise it doesn't stay like just for an example if you make a million dollar today it's not going to stay it's going to go you're going to spend automatically it will go so that's the thing same thing is with because the time is time bound with time it will change it will evolve you your mind needs to constantly evolve and get better 
that's what I have learned and I have done in my life and that's the reason I have sustained it for 22 years and I'm doing the same thing and never got, uh, I've never gotten bored uh, out of uh, these kind of goals and that's what I teach other people. What do you think? I think uh, I'm grateful for all the love, uh, for praises and good wishes that I get from people that I know, I don't know. Uh, however, I, I just feel it's the same person who just changed the body. You know, the kind of respect you get after losing a certain amount of weight. I, I question these people. These are people at my work, these are people in my surroundings. I'm the same Manisha, you know. So yes, people do judge you by the weight you are. And then they also praise you for the weight loss you've done. But uh, yes, sir, I started with you at a weight of 125. My only goal in life was to be 99 kilos. I came to you with a, a photo I took early morning on the scale. I told you, yes, sir, this is my weight 99. You were happy. You hugged me. You told me, you've come a long way and you have a long way to go. We are just getting started. Yesterday, when I, I hit 40 kilos down, 40 kilos down, I don't know where. I couldn't pick up those two dumbbells and walk from that rack here. And I told you, how can I not walk with this? And I was walking with this for all my life. And you you celebrated it. You told me, let's take a picture. It's it's a victory. And and as soon as I kept the dumbbell down, you told me, you know what? I'm not. We still have more to go. So you always make me grounded you always if i i don't want to work if i go somewhere sitting up on the cloud you bring me up from there you humble me down and you be like don't associate yourself to that number and there is a lot more to go so even in one of my uh, posts i have put a comment that yes i am 40 kilos lighter yes i am waiting to reach the goal weight that you set for me but i just can't wait for what more you will say so I think we are just getting started. It's such a powerful um, sentence by you that there is no there is no borderline. So exactly. you will praise me today for being in two digits. You will praise me tomorrow for being uh, on eighty five, on seventy five, on sixty five, on fifty five. And and those praises will never stop because my coach is already writing or is already manifesting and visualizing a different goal for me. So I don't associate. Or I don't really take it a lot to my head because I know that there's so much more. You know, these kind of uh, uh, acts can only be done by someone who has, who himself have gone through the same process and humbled himself uh, without letting other people humble him. And I did not have a, uh, you know, luxury or I was not fortunate enough to let, give this opportunity to people to teach me this lesson because I had no one. And I had to learn all this to myself. And the thing which uh, is very common these days, you all say, we are just getting started. Start. This just sentence started uh, nearly 20 years ago. And I, I used to, you know, I used to say it in, uh, in Hindi, yeah. and I used to fight with everyone. And I used to say, you know, the, all the loudest abusive words to people because I was just fighting openly like even people will beat the shit out of me if I'm in a fight or uh, that's how my upbringing was and I was bullied and all of that and I used to just I would cry people are beating me at that time but I'm saying just this thing you wait you wait I will come back I will come back I don't have to come back for them now where I have reached is Alhamdulillah I don't need to go to anyone and prove them that who I am and what I can do because my superpower is right there sitting in front of me. This is my superpower. I mean, do I need to go and tell people like what I do and what I can do? I mean, you guys are and there are so many more people who are everywhere in the world and sitting and doing their things. I don't need to go people and say like what I can do now. Look at me. So it started with Abhi to bas meri shurwaat hai, and then I am just getting started when I learned English. And then when I got people, it became we are just getting started. And, and, and we changed it to we are just getting started with the Yasser Khan. Yeah, we are just getting started <laughs> with the Yasser Khan. Khan. Exactly. Then now it has become we are just getting started with Yasser Khan. So pehle wo Hindi mein tha, phir wo Angrezi mein ban gaya jab thodi Angrezi aagayi mujhe, to phir uske baad wo I ki jagah pe V ho gaya. I said like why is just me? Because we all are just getting started. And the same thing I want to teach other people. And now it has literally taken the same essence 
of the word we are just getting started the way it was abhi to sirf meri ye shuruaat hai dekha kya hai tumne that's what i used to tell it was completely negative if you show it yeah. to other people that convert into positive wo bahut anger ke sath it was like complete you know hurtful heartbroken angry young kid who was like just trying to prove it to the world and fighting to the world and against everyone from his family to his uh, whole city and whole country everyone was just against and doing something completely opposite and every time when i, I have uh, seen that now i am success is right there i said like and trust me i don't want it i will do something else because i just could not believe how can i achieve success just now because the price i have paid was much more than this than me getting success just like that and i let go and i just went where my heart was pulling me and i'm here and this is what makes me go to bed and makes me sleep at night peacefully before i was not sleeping that peacefully yes seven so seven to eight hours yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me when it comes to praises i think i have uh, made the most of them and uh, i have also let it completely affect me you told me this about 2 weeks ago ki nigi the next thing for you to work on is not let the good or the bad be affect you and that i think i really need to do because i have let praises get to me where i thought i am the queen of the world then on the moments where i didn't want to work hard enough i'm like nahi maine itna to kiya hai sab bolte hain you know i also let it affect me from a pressure perspective because we make mistakes and i was like no i have the standard i need to keep up with everybody thinks i'm a fitness girl everybody thinks i doesn't i don't cheat so every time i would cheat i'd be like oh am i lying so am i posting something wrong so if i don't share this obviously with social media comes that added pressure so i think i've seen the positive of it i've seen the negative of it when i go out to parties even if i'm having one french fry are you allowed oh my god i'm human like can we calm down so yeah i think uh, i have let it get the best of me and the worst of me and uh, goals for me would be to remain zero koi acha bole koi bura bole i have to do what i have to do correct exactly and i think uh, when we say like you just said like you know you are the queen of the world or you are so good in this and these are the things which uh, if you believe in that no one needs to tell you mm. and no one can decide that because some will say yes you are and some will say no you are not who are jealous and who don't on some people maybe actually honestly saying it no you are not that can be and some will say like no no yes yes you're good you're good you're good and they're just praising you over praising you for not so none of this matters because you're the only one who's putting into work yeah. you're the only one who's being disciplined and who is achieving your goals that should not come with others approval yeah who are these people who approves you how, how much do they even know about you do they even know you that's why when people talk about me and i get to hear about oh so and so said about this and i am like uh, i'm sure that the person must be my best friend i don't know who is my best friend by the way i don't even have friends because you are telling me that this person knows so much about me then good job just ask him or her to live his own or her own life first and then talk about me so these are the things you don't need anyone because it's just you and no one and everything what you see in them because you want to see it they are the reflection of you this is one thing which i like you have this uh, french fries and someone like oh how can you have it there was a time when people used to when i used to study in madrasa oh you are uh, studying quran how can you do this how can you watch television how can you wear jeans and t-shirt how can you uh, how can you smile i mean what is that when i was a young kid so eventually how i became and now no matter what i do I mean, I genuinely I want to see people actually who will come to me and tell me that how can you do that? It's a big question now. But who will come and tell me how can I? I mean, what do you mean how can I? Do I need to ask you before I do this? Now explain me because I will make that person sit for two hours. I will I will ask for the. I am not satisfied right now. Just keep explaining. Yeah, yeah, keep explaining. Let me yield. Just keep explaining. Go on because I am not done. I'm not done listening to you. Why did you interrupt me? If I was eating, you came and you asked me how can you? Now you explain. Why did you ask that question? I didn't understand your question. Keep explaining. Simple. Just keep explaining to me why did you say that to me? 
Oh, come on, what are you saying? Now I need to go. Did I invite you to come and tell me? Question me what I was doing? No, right? Now you cannot leave. Now you have to answer me. That why did you say that to me? And this is exactly what I know me being wrong at that time. But why the other person and who gave them this, you know, but I tell you one thing. It's not their fault. If it's you, if it's you, if it's you, if it's me, we are wrong. This is our attitude. We teach the tone to people to treat us like that. If you put every personal thing out there, everything about you is just like open. Everyone knows about that. It's, uh, what do you think? What do you expect? What will happen after that? People will just come and ask about personal things only because that's what you're showing. That is, now if, imagine if I'm showing like, see, my arms are looking so good. Now you will come in the evening and say like, yes sir, I saw your video of arms. Nice man. How many inches? How many inches? What did you train? How do you train? What do you eat for this? So you are going to ask me questions about my arms. But if now the people are coming and asking you about X, Y, Z, that is you only who is showing it. So it's very simple. It's our fault. It's not their fault. Yes, if I don't show anything, if I don't do anything, then if someone comes, I say like, come, that's it. Two hours you have to explain me. That why did you ask me that question? I don't know you. You don't know me. Even if I know you, did I tell you to come and ask me that? Now explain. It's, it's very simple. It's not a rocket science because we allow people, we teach them, come and bother us. But we forget, actually, it's our own creation. We have created this surrounding of such people. And now when they are bothering us, why do we blame them? We, take, we, sh we must take the responsibility. Anyway, guys, I think it's a beautiful video and beautiful conversation with you guys. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes what was, what is the biggest fear of people to speak in front of the camera? I think my clients speak... <laughs> really well in front of the camera and uh, they speak the truth and that's what I told you in the beginning of the video. Do not try to please these viewers because guys I wanted the genuine answer from these three because the kind of results they have got I know you want the same results. If not you, someone in your family, someone in your close circle want to see the similar results and that's why I, I told them like everything you have to speak from your heart and what is the truth, not a person lie. That's why if any, I am adding more and more to this, what they say, so that no, 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 no. The truth is not done yet. Let me tell you more. Let me tell you more. And everything, this is, uh, this is the whole idea of this video so that we all can help the people who are watching uh, this video. By the time this video will come to you, and I know you will say that uh, I want to join. Uh, Nigi will be at least five kgs down. Uh, Manisha will be 5 to 6 kg, 7 kg is down by the time this video will be edited and Ghalib will be uh, inshallah in his uh, 80s and so like 5, 6 kg is down as well so uh, yeah exactly now the question is now the question is when this video will be edited and we will post this video what you would be doing that's a big question you would still be thinking that should you start should you join should you, should you do this should you do that but the day I am going to post this video, I am also going to post the story of these three people that where, how far they have reached because I am saying it openly. Now I want to prove that how far they have reached. <laughs> Let's see. And that will show you that uh, you watching these videos is not enough. You need to do something. And what you need to do is the same thing what these people are doing. Right guys? You okay. have any last words? Challenge accepted. Are you ready for that challenge? We accepted the challenge. Yes, Nikki? Yeah, absolutely. Stop watching more reels and more videos and take the action. Take the action. That's it. Thank you very much, guys.